otherwise in the previous video we discussed about default constructor and destructor so in today's lecture i will tell you about overloaded constructor that what is overloaded constructor and why we need to use overloaded constructor as you can see here we want to store the values in this p object of type product we called uh, setters for each variable like to set the value of id we call set product id and to set the name we called product uh, means p dot set name and uh, p dot set price so we are assigning the values to the variable so data members of this p object by using setters so here you can see that we did a pass and value to this p so that's why it is calling a default constructor so what if i am giving the value at this place uh, like one met one and the third value is 25.5 so i don't need to call setters for each variable here i am calling here overloaded constructor and passing it one uh, met one and 25.5 so now it will uh, it will not call default constructors so if if i run this program so you can see here compiler is giving error so what is error so you can see here uh, that no matching function for call to product and product and you can see here int and this is character type of array and the last is uh, double so if you will write here 25.5 f so it will give you an error of this float because this 25.5 f is a floating point number so let's do it quickly so right here product so now it it will call overloaded constructor so overloaded constructor has parameters parameters the first parameter should be in either id and the second parameter should be string name and the third parameter should be float uh, let's suppose f so store this id in the class variable product product id equal to id and the name is equal to name now the name uh, is similar this the parameter name is similar as the class name so in this scope these two names are corresponding to this name so if you want that the left side of name should be the class variable so just write here this arrow name so this is a pointer this this is a pointer uh, which pointing to that object who is calling this overloaded constructor so now at this point this this overloaded constructor is calling by called by this p so this name is belongs to at p object so right here price is equal to f so what if here is float price so you have to write here price now these two variables are of same name so right here this arrow price so let's uh, run this code quickly you can see here one mad one 25.5 so last time uh, I uh, wrote here constructor of name. Remove this line from here and paste this line in overloaded constructor. So let's run it. And before running, uh, I should call overloaded constructor for each of the object. Uh, so it is met to 30.5. The last one is P3 and let's give it values T mat 3 string type mat 3 and the last one is 35.5. So remove this line from here. And remove this line also. Now run this. Uh, you will see here the constructor of medicine one called first and uh, medicine two at the second time and medicine three at the third time but in the case of destructors the destructor of medicine three called first and the second one is mad two and the third one is mad one it is in reverse order of constructors 
So let's comment this these lines also. We'll just see the messages of constructor and destructor. You can see here the constructors, three constructors and three destructors are in reverse order. So I hope so you understood the concept of overloaded constructor. Overloaded constructor is used to assign uh, values at the same time you can store uh, you can send the value of uh, product id name and its price so you can take the values from user also uh, so if you want to take values from users you have to declare where uh, variables to take values from users so let's give it an id right let's write here single out and the id of product Right handle, so right here scene ID and let's make here string and the string name should be name and uh, CEO name of medicine and scene so don't use scene use cash line scene comma and uh, the last one will be a floating type variable p for price so write here CEO and the price and the price of write here name the compiler will show you there for which medicine you are entering the price price and just remove uh, these hardware values and write ID, name, and the price. So let's run it and uh, it is giving me an error. So let's check what is error behind. So in low, it is saying you that product conflicting declaration product P. So it is conflicting that this P is type of product and this there is P of type float. So there cannot be same name of two variables of different types. So just write here P1 or uh, P1. So let's run it again. So P1 is already in the scope. So just write here complete price. Because there should not be more than one variable of same name so now, now the price is not here in this code mean you will not see an, a variable of name price so run this code again now you can see here two and uh, it skipped the name that why it skipped the name uh, this is because of the buffering in memory the buffered occurred so that's why it skipped the input of this uh, string so just write here scene dot ignore so it will help you a lot Run it again and the right here comes five and the name is Groupon. Let's go and the price for Groupon is 60.5. Let's go. So you can see here the constructor of Groupon message and now the 25 Groupon and 60.5 its price. Uh, now just remove this line from here. It was just written to show you about the following scenario of constructors so i hope everything is clear to you default constructor and overloaded constructor and destructor and uh, you know well about uh, getters and setters in my next video i will tell you about copy constructor so when the copy constructor is called by the compiler and what is the functionality of that constructor how objects transfer values in between their data members so don't Forget to subscribe my channel and like this video if you learned from this video.